this is super easier said than done. People are probably going to listen to this and be like, Claire, be quiet because I can't. But Welcome to the first episode of the Glam Gossip Podcast by LLBA. We are so excited to be finally giving you the beauty industry content you've been asking for. My name is Pooja. I am the Influencer Marketing Specialist here at LLBA. And if you're new, we are a Canadian lash and beauty supplier. And our goal is to help beauty professionals thrive and flourish. That is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So let's jump right in. Our guest today needs no introduction. Claire Hooper is an award-winning lash tech entrepreneur, business consultant, and marketing specialist, and content creator. So welcome, Claire. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Yes, we're so happy to have you. So uh, for today's topic, um, a lot of new and especially aspiring uh, lash artists, people in the beauty industry, their dream is to one day have their own beauty salon so Mm -hmm. but they could feel um especially if they're lacking in um, business knowledge business education they might feel a little bit overwhelmed Mm -hmm. so um our topic today is how to successfully start and run your own beauty salon yes and i do think this is a very important topic because it is a goal for a lot of people um maybe you've been at home for a while and you're like this is my next step in my business but it is there's a lot of moving pieces to it that we have to be aware of Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So um, I think first step is maybe we could get started by you telling us a little bit about your journey. How did you get started as a a lash tech? Yeah, so I have been in the lash industry. I'm coming into my eighth year of lashing, which makes me really excited, but also makes me feel a little bit old (laughs) because I've been doing it a long time. Um, But it's it's a really great industry to be in. Um, And just how I kind of got started, long story short, but I was a child and youth worker and I just became super burnt out in the career. It was really heavy. Um, And at the time I was getting my lashes done and my lash tech said to me, you should take the course to do lashes. And I was like, no one's going to pay me to do their lashes. And she's like, you're paying me right now. So that was my light bulb moment. Like, oh, I can actually make money doing lashes. Um, Took a course was super awful when I first started, if you saw my first picture. (laughs) But, um, you know, along the way and being in the lash industry, I've had a lot of opportunities, which has been incredible. I've been able to educate, um, you know, people on lash skills, uh, business skills. I've worked with different brands. I won a lash competition. Um, I spoke at conferences. So um, I have a lot of experience, which is good. And I've even opened my own salon. So um, putting all that into helping people take their beauty business to the next level. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> that is exactly what we're trying to do here at LLBA as well. Yeah. So um, can you maybe walk us through maybe some of the practical, more logistical aspects of owning like a brick and mortar beauty salon that some people might not even think of? Yes. And so sometimes we look at it like really, really black and white and really simple. Like, OK, I see the space. I like it. It's 1500 bucks a month. I'm just going to pay the money and life will be good. But there's a lot more to it than that. Um, and one of the major things I feel like one of the biggest pieces that we have to look at is the lease. So um, it is a legal document when you sign a lease with a landlord. Um, and we have to go through all the bits and pieces of it because it can be really overwhelming. Like I said, it's a legal document. Like it can be pages and pages. Um, and you want to make sure that everything in that lease is going to fit your needs and your rights with if you're leasing a commercial property, your rights are different than, say, if you're renting your apartment or renting right. your house. You have much different rights. Um, so you have to look at that. And commercial leases can be 5, 10, 15 years. They can be really long. So if you know I'm locked into something 10 five, 10, 15 years, you want to know that it's going to suit your needs. Um, So one of my biggest recommendations is to have it looked over by professional, which would be um, a lawyer that deals with commercial leases. I know when we're just trying to get our place going, we're thinking of all the dollars we're spending, but it's something that's super valuable and worth the money. Um, And I can give you an example in when I opened my salon was I had it looked over by somebody, but the problem was is there was something that was missing. So it was like my garbage was kind of building up in my place. And I said to my landlord, where do I put my garbage? I didn't even think of that. And she's like, there's no garbage removal. And I was like, what do you mean there's no garbage removal? She's like, no, you have to take it home. So that was something. And she's like, I'm like, how can you do that? But she's like, it's not in your lease. And I was like, 
Okay, oh, wow. she's right. It's not in my lease, so I don't have any rights to that. So here I am hauling my lash garbage home to my house to put out. Um, so something that small that you may overlook in your life because you think, of course, there's you know going to be garbage removal. So I just really be careful. You think you can look it over or your family, but have someone professional look it over um, and really know what you want out of your lease and everything you need to make your business run. Um, so the lease is one thing. I know that that went on for a little bit, but I'm just I I'm really passionate yeah, about no, it because I like people thing. can get in big trouble. Yeah. Um, and then uh, also another thing is your health department or your health body. Um, people overlook this too, and it's really really important because beauty services have similar um, res restrictions or guidelines to food service industries, right? Because we are dealing like lashes, you're around the eye. If you're doing microblading, you're cutting the skin, right? Um, so things we have to think about. So whatever your health body guidelines are, you may need for your space. So some places you need a sink to wash your hands. You also need a sink to wash your tools. Uh, depending on your health body, you may need a sink in every single room that you do oh, beauty wow. services, which can be expensive with plumbing you know is it set up for that you need hot running hot running water um so really look whether you are in canada or you are in the u.s or abroad listening to this podcast make sure you know what your guidelines are before um, you get your space so that you can make sure everything in your space works with the health guidelines um and they are usually really good they want you to be successful so call them in advance and just be like what do i need to open give me a list um and then make sure you get health inspected Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, right on. Yeah. Those yeah. are some great uh, tips there. And what about um, staffing? Some, you know, beauty um, entrepreneurs, they might not start off with a large staff, but slowly, slowly, they might start needing more help. A receptionist. Uh -huh. um, how do you go about managing if you have like no experience with that sort of thing? Yeah. So those are the things you would want to reach out and get further education on 100%. Managing staff is very, very different than managing yourself. I always say you could never pay me enough money to manage staff. It's, it's <laughs> difficult, yeah. right? Like you do need the expertise and the skill. And again, while you're looking for your place, are you wanting to rent beds? Do you need a space? You want a space you can grow with, right? Uh, to rent beds. Are you going to need the receptionist? These are things that um, not even just managing them, what's your budget for it? You need to look at that. And what's your criteria for your staff if you're going to be hiring staff? Like what you have to be really clear about what their role is because it can get muddy and then you could get upset staff, you could get upset, um, stuff like that. Or like your unit, do you need someone to come in and clean? Are you busy, right? These are things you have to look at before we even sign our lease. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And what about like, they say in business, like, location is everything. Mm -hmm. What do you know, what would advice would you give in terms of, like, the location of your salon? Yeah, look at all things because some. do you want to be foot traffic? Do you want to be somewhere where people can just walk by and see you? Do you want to be right off the highway? Do you want to be um, somewhere, you know, if you're really remote, a lot of people will open studios um, in industrial areas because the rent's cheap. Yeah. But all your clients are going to need a car, right? There's no transit. So um, when you're looking at location, really think about what kind of clientele you're bringing in, who you want, um, and then you're going to be able to decide on location. And sometimes you're going to spend more to get certain things, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think a lot of beginners, they feel really intimidated, like when they first start off, like, how do I get my first customers where are they going to come from mm -hmm. so maybe you can help us out a little bit and um, explain how do how do you get your first customers your first clients yeah so um, because we are in business to make money right and if we're looking at opening a salon or even if you're just at home and like your equipment costs you want to start making money in your career right so getting those first clients um, so a couple of things one um, that I had have been suggesting for a really long time and one thing that worked for me when I first started is I took um, a number of models so I took them for free that was one thing that I did um, and then they came back for fills not all of them but some did come back for fills, which was really helpful. Um, and then it's good to practice as you're just starting, kind of build your portfolio work. Um, another thing is use your free, I love free, okay, free network. Um, so your friends, your family, the family of your friends, like reach out to them. Um, and I know this can feel a bit intimidating, but at the end of the day, you have to market the hardest for your business, right? Like no one's going to do it harder than you do it. Um, so reaching out, create something on Canva, a little graphic. This is my opening special. You don't even have to do a special, just what I'm doing. Um, send it to your friends and family. Be like, hey, can you just pop this in your Instagram story? Can you just, you know, post this to your social media, your Facebook page? Um, 
and then you know they're going to shout you out and all of that is free it's just a favor you're asking somebody um and it gets your name like in the streets you know mm-hmm. uh, that you're offering a service mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's such a great tip about mm. the models i never thought of that but actually that's like that's a really good uh tip because then you can have like these beautiful Instagram photos. Yes. And like when you take models and they're free, um, I know not everybody wants to work for free, but if you think of it in place of, okay, I'm doing this free model, that's the, to me, that's the same as you going and putting $100 in an Instagram ad, right? Like it's still marketing. Um, so you do the model and yeah, you can have great pictures because there's no pressure when it's free. Mm-hmm. You can do the style you want. You can take all the time you need. You can be like, we're going to take a thousand pictures when we're done, but they're a model. So they're happy to get free lashes, right? Yeah, that's um, definitely true. Yeah. And then you hope that some of them will come back for fills. Probably not all, but some will. Yeah, Yeah, it's a great place to get started. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now you've had your first clients. Now the task is, okay, how do I keep them coming back? How Mm -hmm. do I keep them coming in for like those two-week refills? Yes, and so there's a couple steps here. So one, you want to provide an excellent experience, right? No one's going to come back if they didn't have a good time, right? So make sure your space is inviting. Make sure your space is clean. Um, You know, are you really welcoming? And These are one little thing I love to try to put in with new clients when they come back for their first fill, right? So say you did the model, they come back for a fill. Um, Trying to remind them of all the reasons their service was amazing. So, you know, when they come, I'll be like, oh, wasn't it amazing to wake up in the morning looking flawless with your lashes? And they're like, yeah, it was so great. Like, you really (laughs) want to, yes, you want to remind them why they need to come back for their service and how it's going to make their life better. Like, you have to kind of push that. Do you want to sit them down and give them a 30 minute lecture? No, (laughs) but like just adding it into your service about, and as long as I've been doing lashes and anybody who's done beauty services knows, clients always say, I love to wake up flawless. That's always the the -hmm. thing people say. So add that in. Okay, there's your tip. Write it down. Add that into your service. Um, Excellent service. uh, Educating them. And then also trying to get your clients to pre-book in their appointment. Um, People get really nervous for this. I see it with students all the time. They're like, I don't want to say it. But just being like, hey, when do you want to come back next for your appointment? Let me book you in at a date and time that works for you so we can ensure that you get the date and time you want, right? Just something simple like that. Most people will rebook with that kind of like assertiveness. Some people will be like, I want to look at my calendar, which is fine. Um, But if you can get every five out of 10 clients to pre-book, you already know they're coming back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, refills make such a difference. So I'm a strong advocate for that. Yeah. Um, So in terms of marketing, putting yourself out there, what are some tips or advice or maybe some tools you could suggest for beginners in the beauty industry to promote their business, do some little advertising, especially maybe if they're on a budget or they're just starting off? Yeah. Um, So we talked about having like your network, like your free people that you're going to go to. But another thing, this is stepping out a little bit out of your comfort zone, um, take it to the next level, but still also free, um, is going to your community. So like lashes and hair are best friends. Lashes and nails are best friends, right? If you get one beauty service, you probably get them all. Like you know, I think of all the money I spend on beauty a month, right? It adds up. Um, So going into your community and seeing. So you could go into a hair salon and sometimes we'll think of, you know, partnering or doing a collab. It doesn't even have to start that intense. You just walk into a hair salon that's close to your new sol- your new studio you've opened. Um, and you just say, hey, like, I'm Claire. I just opened up down the street my new lash studio. I just want to come in and introduce myself. Um, and if you guys have any clients or questions, like, of people who want lashes, like, feel free to send them my way. It can be that simple. Now your name is in their thoughts. And they have a client who's like, I really want to get lashes. Oh, a new girl just opened down the street, right? So you can start there. Um, and I know a little bit outside of our comfort zone, um, you can even walk with, you know, bring them donuts or cookies or something like that, just to introduce yourself in the neighborhood. Um, taking that a step further would be asking people to do collabs. So, you know, I'll shout you out to my clients. If you shout me out to your clients, like in your newsletter or something like that, um, can be really helpful. Cause like I said, beauty services pair very nicely together. Um, And then moving another step further uh, would be going to like Google reviews and stuff, having your clients um, writing your reviews on Google. It is Google, Yelp, all those ones, um, depending on where you're located. So, so, so important. Social proof, like nine times out of 10 is what's going to sell your services, right? Because I can sit here and be like, come see Claire. She's the best. Like, I'm so good. Um, But people are like, great. Like, you think you're great, of course. Like, you know, (laughs) you want clients shouting you out. It's going to give you more credibility for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, so I think you, you might have already touched on this, but first of all, I love the cookie idea. Yeah. <laughs> Best way to win people over, yes, for food. sure. <laughs> so, um, what about client testimonials? You already touched on this with the Google reviews, but how do you actually, some people might feel a little bit embarrassed to, you know, ask someone for a review. So mm-hmm. maybe can you go a little bit more in detail about the reviews, the testimonials, and how do you approach people? Yes. So um, sometimes you can even make it silly, like, hey, shameless plug, like, I'm hustling for reviews. Like, sometimes I'll say it like that if I'm feeling nervous. But um, we, our clients, okay, so if your client's coming to see you multiple times, they're spending lots of money with you. They clearly like you, right? So you have to go in with that mindset. Like, your clients love you. They want to support you because they're already supporting you with their coins. They're supporting you by showing your work, like your lashes that you've done on them walking around everywhere. Um, So that's important to know that they love you, they want to support you, they want to help you any way they can. Um, So asking them just, hey, um, you know, I'm trying to build up my Google reviews, would you mind writing me a review? It has really simple, doesn't have to be long, um, just telling me how lashes make your life better. So that part is key um, because we talked about like our clients, how is it great for them? Um, Because they can get on Google and say, Claire's great, Claire's this, Claire's that which is nice. I appreciate it. But I want to know how lashes made your life better. So when people read the reviews, they can say how it made their life better or how it will make their life better. Um, So I like to ask clients for testimonials instead of reviews, Mm. just gets them thinking more about their life. Right. Um, And then make it easy for them. So you ask them, you send them the link to write the review, like just make it as easy as possible. Tell them it just has to be a couple lines. Um, it's be like it's going to take you under two minutes just let them know how simple it will be for them to do it hmm. okay yeah. yeah that sounds easy yeah <laughs> and, said than done. yeah <laughs> and i know it is hard but as i said that mindset of knowing your clients want to support you and sometimes like you can only remind people so many times so there's clients i've mm-hmm. had for now eight years who i've been asking to write me a google review who still haven't they love me but they're like oh claire i keep forgetting so some people won't follow through when you ask and that's okay it doesn't mean they don't like you um it just means they forget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah. Okay. I do have a question for you. You yes. might laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no. What do you me. do? What do you do with those questions, those clients who call you and they're like, all oh, my lashes fell off? <sighs> Okay, so I've been lashing. I've been lashing eight years, and I still get you know the odd client who there is an issue with retention. It's part of the game of being a lash artist. It does happen, unfortunately. Um, So one thing that I always love to do is have like it's I call it like an emergency checklist. So if I have a client reach out to me saying all their lashes fall off. First, I will say I'm going to message my other clients from that day to see if they're having any issues so I can rule out any issues in my room because sometimes clients are well versed on what it is. So I've had clients say to me, well, it must be the glue or the humidity was off like they already have gone and done research. So I'll tell them I'm going to message my other clients from the day to see if they've had similar issues. And it's good for you as a lash artist, because if I message my other clients and they're like, yeah, my lashes fell off, too, then I know I have an issue. Right. Um. But 99% of the time, there's no other issue. It's just this one client, right? So I can go back to them and I'll be like, okay, my other clients, there was no issue, but it could be these things. So this is the checklist I've created that all the possible issues someone could have had lashes fall off. So in that, it's a long document that I send to clients. So (laughs) it's it's long, but um, it'll have, uh, so it'll have all the things I do as a lash artist. And you're not going to write this in like a snobby way or anything like that. Like, it's Mm -hmm. just like, here, I just want to tell you all the things that I do. So it's like, you know, I wash their lashes. I, I prep, I made sure my humidity was good. I use the same adhesive all the time, like just kind of You put it in a nice way because you don't want to sound like you're attacking them, right? All the things that you do as a lash artist to ensure the retention's good and all the possible things that could have happened that would cause their retention to be poor. Um, And then usually from that list, they're like, oh, that that number five or whatever, you know, could have been the issue. Um, And then I say like, okay, if you want to come in for a quick troubleshooting session so we can try to figure out what's going on, because sometimes being in face to face with that person, you can figure out what the issue is easier than like over text or over call. Um, So I will offer a troubleshooting session, like I'll say 20 minutes, like it's not a full fill. It's like 20 minutes to figure out what the problem is. Um, And then you go from there and you just educate again about how to have good retention um, and what you're doing on your end. 
if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it no, sounds like a lot and I know I'm like a document, but like it sounds intense, but it's good to like kind of lay it all out because when we think about it with our clients, you know, say you have 20 clients, they come in, you do the almost the exact same service for every single client. Your client is the variable. They leave and they go do their own life, right, outside. Um, so we have to figure out what pieces are causing it. But you're a team, you and your client, right? Like you have to think of it that way. They're not trying to attack you. You're not trying to attack them. You just want the best for both of you, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah. So maybe you could kind of touch on, um, touch a bit more on um, customer service or dealing with difficult clients since it's kind of on the same topic. Mm-hmm. We could make like a totally whole separate podcast just mm-hmm. on that topic alone. But maybe if you want to just like quickly kind of give us some tips or anything like that. How do you deal with like the Karens? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> lash Karens. yeah, it can be hard. And I try to come from it like from a place of they're not trying to attack me. They're not trying to dismantle my business. Like they're probably just frustrated, whatever is going on. And like I said, like people spend good money to get a service. They want to make sure they're getting all of it out of their service. But one of the biggest thing is education. And I think you have to educate right from the start, right? So, I mean, in my early days of lashing, I learned this, that people would message me. They wouldn't book their fill. They'd message me at four weeks and be like, well, my lashes are almost gone. Well, it's been four weeks. But I didn't tell them you have to come back at two or three weeks. Like I didn't let them know this information. So I think you can avoid, you know, the frustrating clients a lot of the times if you're very upfront with them about the expectations from the beginning if they come in and they want crazy thick mega volume but you could their lashes can't support it you have to tell them don't pretend you can make that happen for them um don't try to do it knowing they're going to fall off the next day because they're too heavy um so communication i feel like is the biggest and being assertive um because you are the expert right they're coming to you Mm -hmm. they're paying you because you're the expert so you have to assert yourself like one so i think communications one of the from the beginning can help deal with those difficult clients down the line Right. And that's mm-hmm. a good point you make, too. Like, um, you have to make sure on your end that all your T's are crossed, your mm-hmm. I's are dotted, yeah. you know, before you come back at someone with a response. Yeah. No, yeah. You have to think about it first because we want to lead with emotion, right? If someone is like, oh, the lashes were crap or whatever they say to me, like, automatically I'm like, excuse me? Like, <laughs> I'm good. Like, what do you mean, right? We want to attack because we're human. Um, but thinking about it and making sure that – that's why I think it's really important to keep your services consistent, what you're doing for your clients, so you can say, I do the same thing every single time, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And maybe you could tell us, if you could go back in time, mm-hmm. <laughs> revisit little Claire, not yeah. little Claire, yeah. but younger Claire, yeah. or younger you – um, what advice would you give yourself or any new mm-hmm. um, lash artists or beauty entrepreneurs? What advice would you give? Yeah, this is super easier said than done. People are probably going to listen to this and be like, Claire, be quiet. because I. <laughs> but not comparing yourself to other people. Um, I spent a long time, years in the comparison game, looking at other people and especially educators that I looked up to. So I'd look at their like flawless Russian volume set and I'd be like, mine looks nothing like that. Well, of course it doesn't because I've been lashing two years and they've been lashing 10. Like it can't be the same. Um, So I think trying, thinking of social media a little bit, it's a place to connect and it's definitely a tool, but don't get into the comparison game or remember we only post our highlights, we only post our best work, right? No one, every, even retention, right? People will post, this was my four or five, six week retention. And you're like, I'm struggling to get a week retention. Well, they've had that struggle too. They're not going to post it, right? So um, don't get into the comparison game um, and try to just like stay in your own lane in that sense. And like your skills will build. It's not easy. Lash is not easy, but like it will get better. I promise. (laughs) (laughs) So <laughs> I would tell myself, Claire, don't cry. It'll get better. Oh. Yeah, because there was definitely tears. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so this last question is a bit of a bonus. Mm-hmm. Um, so one thing I really love about the beauty community is the sisterhood. Mm-hmm. Maybe you could touch on the importance of networking and how do you build connections, relationships yeah. with your peers, with um, other lash artists, other beauticians. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, because I've heard people say like, oh, it's so catty or it's this or that. I'm like, well, no, not in my experience. It doesn't have to be, right? Um, And 
it's like reaching out to people. And again, this can be something that makes us a little bit nervous. But I think of me and like one of my like best lash friends. I just loved her vibe so much on social media. And I was like, I really want to be her friend. I want to be her friend. And I just kept sliding in her DMs. <laughs> and we laugh about it now because <laughs> she's like, you wore me down. It's <laughs> like, yeah. But like <clears throat> when you see people that you admire or that you want to get closer to or like make friendships and connections with like respond when they post something like reply to their stories like send them voice notes voice notes are a great way to connect with people you know and compliment them we don't have to like butter them up a hundred but like you know like be be real yeah don't be (laughs) creepy but like be real and like try to like hey what's up like what's going on you know I really like that set you posted um trying to go in there so also networking events are really really great um again can be out of your comfort zone but I think it's something really good like lots of times there's like lash socials or there's conferences um and if you look at a lot of the socials and conferences now are really trying to um I went to one and they had like a buddy system they had a uh, buddy lunch system so there was a place you could it could sound silly but like it was good there's a place you could go if you had no one to go get lunch with for that day at the conference and you could like oh, wow. there, there was a, I know it sounds <laughs> it sounds crazy but there was a lot um, of people awkward. standing there it sounds <laughs> awkward but there was a lot of people like standing there and I was like oh would I want to stand there and then I was like wait but a lot of people showed up and then they all met and they like got lunch together and I was like oh it was like a way to help you meet somebody so sometimes you have to do something like awkward or cringy or like I don't want to do this um to meet people in the industry but I promise you it's better together um it's so much better than going it alone Mm. okay cool (laughs) sounds great thank you so much so I think that about wraps it up unless there's anything else you think you feel like our viewers should know about starting your own business starting your own beauty salon yeah my biggest thing would just be like go slow I kind of said like be patient with yourself um get the education listen to the podcast like you know um be don't be afraid to reach out to people and ask for more advice um hit up youtube look at the llba channel right there's lots of business advice there um yeah be gentle with yourself it takes time Mm -hmm. okay thank you so much claire for joining us today Um, we really appreciated having you yeah and i think uh, a lot of our viewers are going to feel so motivated now to start their own beauty salon start their own business so yeah. thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. It was really, really good. Oh, we loved having you mm-hmm. always. And if you guys want to follow Claire or keep up with um, what she has to offer on social media, all of her links will be listed. So no worries there. Awesome. And um, thank you so much for watching the Glam Gossip Podcast by LLBA. If you're looking to start your career in the beauty industry, please sign up for our LLBA Learning Academy. And don't forget, we do sell the best lash supplies over at LLBA.com. So until next time, bye. bye.